Hi guys, welcome to Handy and Easy. Today we will be working in the kitchen and we will be installing this color Kaori kitchen faucet. I selected this Kaori model because it has a very nice design, very minimalistic and also I like the finish of the, of the faucet. And it has a, a lifetime warranty, so I hope uh, it will last for a long time. Uh, unlike the, the Chinese type that I had, that it had uh, multiple leaks, I hope that this uh, lasts for, for a long time. In case you're interested, I'm leaving a link in the description below. These are the materials that we're going to use. As you can see here, they are not many. First, we have this uh, soap dispenser assembly. Next, we have the actual faucet with all hoses pre-installed. Next, if we, if we are installing our faucet in a three-hole sink, we'll need uh, this metal plate with uh, this plastic uh, gasket on the back, and this will help cover uh, the two holes on the side. If you have uh, only one hole in your sink, you won't need this. Next, we have uh, this weight, uh, that will be used uh, for the extension hose. Next, we have this uh, retaining ring. And finally, we have a rubber gasket and the metallic ring. The first step will be to remove your old faucet. This varies from model to model, but I made a very detailed video on how to remove this Chinese type faucet and I will leave a link here in the corner and also a link in the description below in case you are interested. It is important to say that this section uh, must be very clean so that the gasket that goes under the plate that we will install here makes a good seal. Now that you have removed your old faucet, we will proceed to install the new one. The first step will be to unthread uh, this quick connect section like this. Next, as I have a three hole sink, we will use this metal plate to cover the two holes on the sides. If you have a one hole sink, this step will be unnecessary. Now, take this plastic part and place it over the metal plate. And make sure that you can see these plastic tabs on the other side. As you can see here, there is a rubber gasket across the entire perimeter of the plastic part. This will ensure that there are no water leaks. This is a note from the future. After installing the faucet, we noticed we had a small leak under the sink. It turns out that the plate's gasket was not enough for stopping the water from coming under the sink. Although it was a very small leak, I believe this happened because my sink is a little bit old and bent, but theoretically the gasket should prevent any water leaks. If you want to be 100% sure that you will not have any water leaks, I recommend that you use plumber's potty to seal the plate with the sink like I'm doing in this video clip. Make sure that you select the correct plumber's potty. The one that I used here is compatible with stainless steel. But if your sink is made from a porous material, such as granite, you will need a stain-free potty to avoid staining your sink. I made a detailed video on how to seal the faucet plate. I will leave a link in the description below if you are interested. Next, we will place our metal plate over the three holes. Make sure that you can still see the plastic tabs here and also make sure that the center hole is aligned. Before installing the faucet assembly, I just wanted to show you this gasket at the bottom that will help us avoid any water leaks through the center hole. Now, take the entire faucet assembly and run all the hoses through the center hole, like this. Before we fix the faucet permanently to the sink, 
make sure that everything here is aligned and also that the handle is on the right side. This is very important. Before using the retaining ring, we must have a gap of six millimeters or a quarter inch from the top of the, of the ring until the end of the screw. And this is applicable also for the other screw, as we can see in, in this diagram more clearly. Now that we have properly adjusted our retaining ring, we will insert our gasket and rings in the following order. First, we will take our rubber gasket and insert it through the hoses. Next, we will take our metal ring and also insert it through the hoses. And finally, we will insert our retaining ring with the screws on this side. Now we will pass the rings uh, through this section and once we come here we will start screwing it in. Once we arrive at the top section, uh, it is recommended by the manual that we uh, try to align the screws so that the one is on the front and one is on the back, like this. Now tighten the screws. Make sure that they are snug but do not over tight. Now remember this uh, quick connect device that we uh, unscrewed uh, previously, we will have to thread it back again. Make sure that it is only hand tight. Like this. Now we will connect back the water lines. You can see here that this hose has a cold sign and this normally goes in the right valve. So we will try to connect it and then use our adjustable wrench uh, to tighten it. Make sure that it is snug and do not over tight. Now we will do the same process for the hot water line that is normally on the left side. Now we're ready to flush the system. This means that we will get rid of all the dirt that is inside the new pipe system. In order to flush the system, it is important that we remember that up is cold and if we go down is hot. This will help us for knowing which valve to open. We will start flushing the cold system. So I will open the lever in the cold position like this. Now we will slowly start opening the cold uh, valve so that the, the system can be flushed. Uh, you will notice that the, at the beginning the water will come uh, a little bit uh, black and that's that's because all, all of the all, all of the dirt that it's in the line the manual recommends that we flush for one minute but i will just stop when i see that the, the water is clear now we will flush the hot water system 
In order to do this, we'll close again, go down to the hot position, and then open it again. Now we'll start slowly opening the hot water valve and we will let it drain until we see no dirt and we have only clear water. Repeat as many times as necessary until you get only clear water like this. Next we'll install this weight for the extension hose. In order to do this we have to make sure that this compression ring is uh, in the open position so that it can go inside the hose, like this. Then we will move it to a position where it can have uh, some free movement, I believe here, and then we will start uh, screwing it in. This will compress the hose and it will stay on place. has to be only hand tight. Finally, we'll connect the extension hose with the quick connect device and we'll insert it until we hear a click. Like this. Now we can fully open the cold and hot water valves. After this we will check for any leaks and nothing is leaking, so we are ready to go. Finally, make sure that everything is working properly. Let's test the extension hose and then the shower system. It seems that everything is working properly. And if you need to adjust uh, the weight on to, under the sink or if you're having pr uh, trouble uh, pulling this, just uh, move the weight to, the, to an appropriate position. As an option, you can install the soap dispenser that comes with the faucet. But as I already had one installed previously, I am going to quickly show how to do it. It is a very easy process. The first step is to remove the top section of the soap dispenser, like this. Next, take the plastic straw and connect it to the top section, like this. Make sure that it goes all the way down. Now, we will insert this part into the soap dispenser hole. As you can see here, there is a gasket across the entire perimeter that will uh, help us avoid any water leaks. So we will insert it like this. In order for you to get a good point of view, as uh, with the camera is a little bit complicated under my sink as we have a very tight space, we'll imagine that the, this top section is the, is the top of the sink and this is the bottom section. The first thing that you will do is to insert the, the rubber gasket uh, through this section. Then we will take our plastic ring and start screwing it in. Make sure that this is snug. Once you install the ring, We'll take our soap container and start screwing it in. Make sure that it is snug. Finally, use some soap to fill it from the top. And as a last step, insert the top section back into the hole and you're done. For refills, just remove the top section, fill with soap from the top, and just place the top section back into a hole, like this. And with this, we conclude our video. If you liked it, 
please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Handy and Easy, and as always, have an excellent day.